Welcome to Teacher Tom Hanoi. This is a mock IELTS listening exam. You will hear a number of different recordings, and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. I repeat, all the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four parts. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Good luck. Now turn to part one. Part one. You will hear a talk given by a guide to a group of tourists who are going on a coach tour of the capital cities of Europe. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now, listen carefully and answer questions one to five. If you have any problems or difficulties, or if you want to know more about something, then ask me and I'll do my very best to help you. And this is Ray, Ray Smith, who is our driver for this tour. And welcome especially to Chadra and Indira. They've just finished their university exams and are celebrating with a tour before going home to India. Now, Eurobus's European Capitals Tour. Five capitals in six days. I gave you our itinerary as you were coming aboard, so let me take you through it. It hasn't changed from the time you booked, I promise, but various things we couldn't put in the brochure have been confirmed now, and I can tell you about them. This is day one, and we're going to drive from here down the M1 to London, which will be the first of our capitals. We expect to arrive in London at about one o'clock in the afternoon. There will be a break for coffee on the way, probably around 11 a.m. at Northampton. After lunch at three o'clock, there's a tour of the sights of London. Buckingham Palace, the Houses of Parliament, Trafalgar Square and so on. At five o'clock, we'll book you into your hotel for the night. We have arranged some tea, but we need to leave at 6.30 promptly, please, to get you into the show on time. As we hoped, we're all going to see ABBA the Musical. <laughs> <laughs> so you can all sing along. We'll be back at the hotel by 11 o'clock and if you want, you can have a drink or something else to eat then. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 6 to 10. Day 2. Breakfast is arranged for 7 o'clock. We've booked a full breakfast and the bus will leave at 8.30. We must be on time for this because we've got to book into the Eurostar by 9.30 at the latest. And we can never be sure of the traffic, so we need to give ourselves plenty of time. There's a buffet bar on board Eurostar all the way to Paris, so you can get coffee or snacks or anything during the time it takes to go to Paris, which is our second capital. We should arrive at 10 to 1. We'll go straight to the hotel. By the way, it will be the King George Hotel, not the Victor Hugo Hotel 
as originally listed. Don't worry, it is actually a much better hotel. The rest of the itinerary in Paris remains the same. Lunch followed by a tour of the city, the Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe, Notre Dame. You're free for three hours after five to go wherever you want. And we're booked at 8.30 for dinner at Les Cargo. It has four Michelin stars and will be a meal I promise you, you won't forget. Now, I appreciate this is a lot to take in, so I won't go through the rest of it in any detail. Although you can ask me later if you want. I'll just point to some of the minor changes so they don't surprise you later. Day three, we'll drive to Brussels. The trip round the chocolate factory is now confirmed. It will be the Leonidas factory. I'm looking forward to that. There won't be a bus tour of Brussels because there are elections on day three and large parts of the city will be blocked off. So we've arranged a walking tour instead. If any of you feel that doesn't appeal, then see me and my colleagues in head office will try to arrange something else instead. Day four is Luxembourg and there's no change there. Day five is Berlin. Day six is Amsterdam. Not exactly a capital city, but the biggest Dutch town. We have been successful at getting you into the Van Gogh art exhibition there. I know some of you will enjoy that. Then it is back on the ferry and we hope to be in Wolverhampton by midnight. That is the end of part one. You now have 30 seconds to review your answers to part one. Now turn to part two. Part two. You will hear two students, Debbie and Andrew, talking about a university assignment. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. Hi, Andrew. I told Dr. Ball that you were under the weather and he gave me the details of the next assignment so you can get on with it when you're feeling better. Well, thanks, Debbie. Another essay. Actually, it's not an essay. We've got to give a presentation to the rest of the group and prepare handouts for them. We? Oui. Is it group work? It's you, me... Jessica and Mark. It's a business planning exercise. We'll take a hypothetical new business and we'll prepare a business plan for it and then explain it to Dr. Ball. We've got six weeks to do it. So, how do we approach the task? Dr. Ball suggested we took the idea of running a paramedical training company in the Middle East. OK. So who's doing what? Well, we had a chat and we thought you could help Mark. There's quite a bit of medical training in the Middle East, so we can get quite accurate financial costing into this. Mark will do that. He's good at figures. That's good. I can help. I had a job last summer in an accountant's office, and I've got experience with figures. Anyway, what are you and Jessica going to do? We can do some more research on the smaller companies in the area who do medical training, while you and Mark can concentrate on the bigger firms. Both Jessica and I have good research skills. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 18.
Now, listen carefully and answer questions 15 to 18. Seems you've been busy planning the whole project. Well, six weeks seems like a long time, but we've got some midterm tests in a fortnight, so I think we'd better get on with this presentation as soon as possible. You're right. What about arranging when we can meet to check on each other's progress? Well, that's going to be a bit tricky. Jessica won't be here from next Monday to Saturday, as she's got to have some minor surgery. Nothing to worry about, I hope? No, it's just something routine. But Mark will be away at the weekend and won't be back until Tuesday or even Wednesday. His brother's getting married, and he's going to be best man. Well, that means neither of them will have much time to be working on our project in the next couple of weeks, then? No, and as we'll all have to be studying for our midterm tests as well, I think you and I will be bearing the brunt of the work in the initial stages, Andrew. Well, that's fair enough, Debbie. But I hope they'll pull their weight later. I don't want you and I to have to do all the work. We've got to pass these tests too. You're right, but I don't think Jessica and Mark are the type of people to shirk their responsibilities. Anyway, when are we going to have this meeting? What, what about next Wednesday? Well, Jessica will be fine by then, but Mark isn't sure if he'll be back or not. So what about the following day, to be certain? Agreed. Before you hear the final part of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 19 to 20. Now listen carefully and answer questions 19 to 20. But where? We all live in different parts of the town. So how about the student union bar? Don't you think it would be rather noisy? Not if we meet in the morning. I haven't got any lectures until 2 o'clock. None of us has. No, wait. Mark has one at 11. But maybe he could miss that this time and copy up the notes. Let's say we'll meet at the bar bit a bit later, at noon. Good, that's sorted out. Now who's actually going to give the presentation? Jessica has such a quiet voice, and Mark's Scottish accent is difficult to understand. It's not that strong. Sometimes I can't work out what you're saying, Andrew. OK, I admit my accent is not that clear. But remember, we have a couple of Japanese students in the group. It wouldn't be fair on them to have to listen to any of us. We can decide that later. We don't have to worry about that yet. I'll have to rush. I've got a lecture in ten minutes, so get well soon. Thanks, Debbie. We'll be in touch. Bye. That is the end of part two. You now have 30 seconds to review your answers to part two. Now turn to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between Mrs. Davis and a lady she interviewing called Gina. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 27. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 27. Mrs. Davis, hello. Can I see you for a moment? Ah, oh, Gina. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Davis. It's about the job as assistant in the language department. I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, uh, no, no, of course not. I was rather thinking you were coming to see me with the others tomorrow. Didn't I make an appointment for you? Yes, but I've got a bit of a problem. I have to go to London tomorrow to meet my father. He is coming over here for a business meeting. 
I wondered if we could rearrange it. Mm, yes, of course. Right. Now, I got your application form, haven't I? Yes, uh, here we are. Gina Baracco. So, tomorrow's out. How about Thursday afternoon at two o'clock? Oh, that would be fine. That's perfect. Actually, I'm glad you came in, because there were one or two things our personnel department wasn't sure about when they checked your application. And I can ask you about them now. How do you think you'd manage? I mean, your spoken English is pretty good. How do you think you'd manage the administrative side of things in English? I need to comment on the level of your English. Well, actually, I'm not too worried about that kind of thing. Before I came here, I worked as a clerk in a bank for two summers. I'm not a qualified secretary or anything, but I'm fairly organized and I'm good at getting things done. I'm not so sure exactly how good my English is, but then I'll be teaching in Italian, won't I? Yes. I think your English will be fine, and the department would always welcome a good administrator. Now, tell me about your academic commitments next year. You've applied for a place on the master's scheme, haven't you? How would you fit that in with your work for us? Well, it's part-time over two years. So, apart from the reading, which I can do at the weekend and in the evenings, it's about four class hours a week. Anyway, I don't know if I'll be accepted on it, although I feel quite excited. I had the interview last Monday with Dr. Marplot, and it went really well. He asked me exactly the questions I wanted. That's good. Now, the post we're looking to fill is to teach Italian media. In Italian, of course. That involves reading and discussion classes mainly, although you'd be expected to help the undergraduates with their language as well. You can speak to the other assistants about how it works exactly. There is one in each language department. They're mainly Europeans, although I think we've got one Russian too. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 28 to 30. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 28 to 30. Can I ask something? Of course. Well, I think one of the biggest problems for me is going to be money. I get a tiny grant, as you know, and my parents are not rich. So I need to know how much I'd be paid. Of course. Well, the pay is not great. It works out at £150 a week. But the good thing is, you wouldn't have to pay tax. Oh, and you'd be able to keep your college accommodation if you wanted to. That would be cheaper than living out. Yes. Oh, that sounds fine. Well, as you know, I've got to see the other two applicants tomorrow. Then it'll take a week or so to discuss everything with Dr. Santini, the head of Italian. I expect we'll know in a couple of weeks, OK? We'll let you all know then. Oh, thank you very much, Mrs. Davis. Not at all, Gina. Thank you. That is the end of part three. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part three. That is the end of part three. You now have 30 seconds to review your answers to part three. Now turn to part four. Part four. You will hear a talk by a college principal. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 32.
Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 32. Well, perhaps I can start this evening by welcoming you all to the college. Now, some of you, of course, I know well already. But the parents are mostly unfamiliar to me. We are very proud to have you here tonight to present the awards for this year's students. But also to celebrate our centenary and to celebrate the achievements of the college over that time. Before we go on to the main business of tonight, the Achievement Awards, I should like to say a few words to remind you why this college has such a unique reputation in this country. Because it is well known for what it is, which is quite simply the best engineering institute in the United Kingdom. Uh, this is not just my opinion, which might well be biased. It is based on government figures which consistently show that year after year, we provide the highest levels of education, engineering research and pastoral care in the UK. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 33 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 33 to 40. As most of you know, this is the college's centenary year. And it is important, I feel, to reflect on the origins of the college. A hundred years ago, the traditional industries of this area, weaving, cutlery making and agriculture, were in sharp decline, and when they went, in came that scourge of the past, unemployment and poverty. Our college was founded in order to provide for some of the poorest but brightest boys of the town and surrounding area a way out of the poverty of the time. It was an immediate success, a thanks in no small part to the first generation of teaching staff including Frank Harris, a future president of the Aeronautic Society, and Dr. Bart Halliday, whose name is surely known to you all as a Nobel Prize laureate and major contributor to the creation of the first atomic bomb. By 1917, the college was turning out 300 highly skilled, highly qualified graduate engineers a year. Former students at this time include Frederick Cantor, who became a researcher at the Atomic Research Station in Minnesota in America, and the painter Lucien Dudley R.A., who famously didn't complete his studies because of illness. Um, after the end of hostilities in 1918, the college was formally attached to the Northern University in Colton, and has remained a part of that institution ever since. The achievements of the graduates and staff of the college in the years since then are too numerous to list here, but I must mention the invention of the Bell Racing Engine, which has been such a powerful force in automotive engineering. These days, the focus of our research has changed to keep pace with the changes in modern technology. And while many of you will know that we are particularly well known for our expertise in bridge-building technology, you may be surprised to hear that none of us has ever actually built a bridge in our lives. These days it is all done by computer models. So, when we worked on the changes of the Millennium Bridge over the Thames, which wobbled so badly, um, the first we saw of the bridge was when we walked on it after the completion of the changes. In the dozen or so years that I've been principal, that is probably one of my most fulfilling moments. To be able to undertake this work through theoretical modelling rather than trial and error is surely the goal of engineering research.
That is the end of part four. You now have 30 seconds to review your answers to part four. That is the end of the mock IELTS listening exam. You now have 10 minutes to review and transfer your answers from the exam paper to the answer sheet provided. Thank you for your attention. Let us know in the comments what score you got. Also, please like and subscribe for more mock IELTS exams. Thank you, and see you in the next video.